Hello everyone, Smiler here. Welcome to Shutter Sundays. I know, it's been a couple of weeks. Um, I have to catch up. Sorry if I look like hell, I woke up about 30 minutes ago from a really long nap. But um, today I'm talking about the unheard. Sorry, I got an itch. That's annoying. Um, the unheard, which came out last month. It a non spoiler thing, it's two and a it's two hours and five minutes long. Directed by Jeff Brown and um the main character Chloe is played by Lachlan Watson. Um they I think do a pretty good job in the film. Unfortunately there's not too much going on for most of it. Most of the film is just setting stuff up and it doesn't really pay off too well in my opinion. And um the story is about a 20-year-old woman named Chloe who um, gets, she's deaf, and she gets an um, experimental operation to get her ears fixed so that she can hear. And um, she starts having auditory hallucinations to do with her mom's disappearance, and there's someone going around doing bad things. And... That's really about it until the end. <laughs> um, it's not really that scary, I'd say, because most of it is just the character thinking they're having auditory hallucinations and, you know, falling down psychotically. You know, they think they're going mad, but it's not much. Not much is happening <laughs> for most of the movie. Even though I've got a lot of notes, not a lot of what's going down is important. <laughs> it, I thought it was important when I was writing it down. I realised it wasn't that important after watching the movie. But, um, basically, non-spoiler, but almost over, um, I gave it about 5.5, 6 out of 10. Uh, only watch it if you like really long horror movies where nothing happens until about the end. <laughs> But anyway, so that's the non-spoiler bit. Let's go on with spoilers. So, the, the movie starts off, character's on the bus, um, explains who she is, uh, how she became deaf. She has, she goes into a doctor's office and she um, writes down that she is not on any medication. This is important later. I didn't realise how important later. <laughs> So she goes and she sees the doctor. The doctor tells her how the procedure's going to go. Uh, it might not work. And she's like, yeah, okay, whatever. Dad's a doctor. Uh, she's been deaf since she was eight years old. Because she had meningitis. And um, she had a six-month um, coma and woke up deaf. So then um, after the operation is over, it's very fast. Uh, we get the title card of the unheard and um as you probably could guess from the title it's about ghosts um but yeah so she, basically as they explained about where she's from and all that she's from maryland but she's living in um oh, what's it called oh my nose is itching <laughs> but she lives in uh, cape cod because she's living with she's living in her family's uh, summer home for a bit since she's on holiday and um, you know staying out of school for a bit they're trying to get it fixed up and um, they're trying to get it fixed up and to sell it because they don't really go there since her mom disappeared 12 years ago and um, anyway there's a bunch of missing posters uh, this is important because there is a psychopath going around killing people. Uh, <laughs> but um, that's we're not going to talk about that yet. What we're going to talk about is that the water in the cabin doesn't work. So she texts her dad saying, I need a shower. And the dad is like, well, Hank's coming around to fix it. And uh, Hank is played by, uh, hold on, where is it? Nick Sandow. Um, Hank for most of the movie is quite normal and then until 
there's like a couple of scenes where he's a bit creepy and weird and this is because as you probably can guess from me saying the psycho thing he's the psycho but it, it's really obvious because he tries to pin it on this kid that um chloe used to know as a kid called joshua who is uh played by brendan i cannot read my own writing mayor mayor that's it mayor sorry i i took a moment <laughs> but basically um played by brendan mayor who's not really in much from what i've looked at i mean lachlan watson was in the chucky show did a good job good job in that in that show uh, as Glenn and Glenda, you know, Chucky's um, non-gender conforming kids, which, you know, they did a good job. I like them as Glenn and Glenda, not so much as Chloe, because Chloe's kind of not much of a character other than she's de that she used to be deaf. There's not too much to her. Um, but anyway, she starts... Uh, hearing pretty l but midway through the movie she um for most of the part she can't hear and joshua thinks that she, um he's joshua appears takes her to um his mom when chloe comes to see him uh, hank was following by the way and um see this is what i mean by hank being unnecessarily creepy and then um so yeah, you meet Joshua's mom. Joshua's mom only appears in this one scene. I can't remember if she's alive by the end of the movie. I don't believe so. I think she's one of the bodies that we see later. But um, she is just a total bitch, really. You know, she she's in a wheelchair. She's very um. She's very upset about it. And, you know, she takes it out on other people. The fact that she's upset about being in a wheelchair. And um, we don't really see Joshua much. We don't see his mom pretty much ever again. We don't see Joshua for a while again. Uh, anyway, Chloe, when she gets the ability to hear, goes on. This is one of my favorite sequences in the film. She goes around the house just listening to random sounds, you know, knocking pot pots and pans over. Uh, opening stuff like the fridge she uh, puts the tv on she listens to the static and then she hears voices in the static um the voice of her mom so um she thinks that it's an auditory hallucination it's not it's it's ghost stuff it's ghost stuff she uh, calls her doctor the doctor comes over the doctor's like oh are you okay uh she's like uh, yeah but i'm kind of hearing some things that i didn't expect to hear like, uh, so I'm, I'm hearing my mom's voice. She's like, oh, auditory hallucinations are fine, you know. Your body's getting used to being able to hear again. And, you know, stuff like that. Uh, it just kind of conjures up sounds when you can't really hear anything. And um, she, the doctor goes away for a bit. And then, um, anyway, character hears more and more and more voices. Goes, feels like she's going mad. Uh, she hears them in the floor uh, she puts her ear to the floor in the bedroom after she accidentally knocks uh, down some earbuds because there's a sound there's like a party outside that she doesn't like hearing so she wants to put some <laughs> earbuds in but she ends up dropping one and it goes under the bed she goes under the bed to get it put it, try to put it in go up, put it in but then she hears voices in the floor and then um, she decides to go and see Hank, which we then later see more missing posters. Um, they're all women, which is important for when I start talking about Hank being the psycho. And um, the reason why I'm not, you know, stepping around it or, you know, being like, oh, Hank's not the psychopath. And then, oh, surprise, Hank's the psychopath. It's because um, it's pretty obvious that Hank's the psychopath. Like, sure, Joshua acts weird, but not as weird as Hank does. Well, I mean, if you can't, if you don't count um, watching someone's house with a camera in an abandoned house, maybe you don't <laughs> think that's as weird as 
Hank following her around and uh, then later taking her to his cabin when there's a storm. But, um, so, he says, watch out for Joshua. Joshua's a fucking weirdo. He's up to some creepy shit. Uh, you know, he's trying to, like, make Joshua look like the psycho. Which, he does a shit job. He doesn't explain what's weird about Joshua. He's just like, oh, he's been acting a bit strange. He's a bit weird. It's like, how, Hank? How is he weird? How is he strange? You're not going to say? Okay, Hank. Fuck you. You're the psycho. And, um, anyway. <laughs> so, later on, she... She manages to get a drill from Hank and she drills a hole in the floor and this is up in the bedroom. She drills a hole in the floor, listens through, can't hear the voices no more. And then she shines a light down and goes downstairs, puts an X on the ground and then she listens in and that's when the voices are much louder. And um, basically her mom just keeps saying the same shit like, Chloe, Chloe, is that you? Chloe? Chloe doesn't do anything to help. Because it turns out that Hank killed her mom. <laughs> uh, 12 years ago, he killed her. Because she didn't want to sleep with him. Uh, while her husband was out. Um, I don't know how nobody uh, looked into Hank. And didn't see the fact that he is definitely a psycho killer. But uh, anyway, I'll get into that in a minute. So... After she realizes she's having, she's hearing voices, um, she thinks they're hallucinations, she sees outside, uh, across the way, there's a light in the house that's abandoned. So she goes to investigate after a few times of this happening. She finally decides, fuck it, I've had enough, and decides to go and investigate it. Uh, she goes in, and <laughs> the reason why I remember this is because the room that she goes into looks exactly like the living room in Murder House. You know that game I've been playing uh, with the rabbit, with the rabbit guy? Um, <laughs> she goes in and it looks exactly like the hallway from Murder House. You know, the stairs up there, the little door in there. And then you've got the door here at the foot of the stairs. And you've got this little door off to the side. Uh, it just made me think of Murder House immediately. I mean, the front door isn't there, I'm pretty sure, because she goes in through a side door. But, it might be, I didn't see, I don't remember. But, she goes up, she sees that there's actually a camera up there that is pointed towards her house. And it, then she confronts Joshua about it, because Joshua, uh, she spots Joshua leaving the place, like a couple of days later. And she confronts him, being like, why the fuck are you pointing the camera at my house? And he's like, and he also thinks that she's faking being deaf. Because she reacted to something he said earlier in the film. Because, like, he said something. She's like, yeah, whatever. And walked away. And um, he's like, wait a minute. I thought you were deaf. But it's just, like, two seconds. <laughs> it's like a two to five second scene. Uh, where he just basically says, the police are coming by. And he's basically like, oh, they, another one's gone missing. It's like, okay. They, they're intentionally trying to make Joshua look creepy. Because, you know, they want you to think Joshua's the psycho. But it's very obvious that it's Hank. So, um, he basically says that he's been seeing some weird activity in the house since um, she's been gone. Uh, there's, like, weird high-frequency sounds that he can't hear, but his microphones can pick up. So, he's uh, yeah, he's put microphones in the house. Uh, she stumbled upon one earlier. I forgot about that because she didn't react at all. She realized that it was a little device and she didn't react. She didn't go, oh shit. She didn't go, oh, that's that's not good. Oh, what, where did this come from? She just kind of looks at it and then throws it away. <laughs> it's like, okay. Uh, that's not the reaction I'd have when I realized my house was covered in microphones, uh, you know, from someone I didn't know. I'd be like, fuck this. I'm out of here. I'm not staying here. I'm not staying in the place covered in microphones that some fucking weirdo that I don't know put them there. But no, she's like, oh, oh whatever. Oh, okay, it's fine. I know it's a horror movie. Characters make dumb decisions, but that is perhaps one of the dumbest decisions 
in the entire film. But anyway, she starts to lose it. He's basically like, oh, can you hear this? And turns it up real loud. And she's like, fuck, ow, ow, ow. And uh, it's Chloe's mom. She's, she's like, Chloe, is that you? Look how big you've gotten. And it's like, can you, like, say, beware of Hank? Watch out, he's a psycho killer. He killed me. But, you know, she doesn't, she doesn't. She just says, oh, look how big you've grown. And it's like, can you not say something else, ghost? Please help her not get captured by Hank. Make sure that she knows to stay away. But no, she doesn't do anything beneficial. She's like that ant that you don't see for a very long time. Who like, who's like, oh, I haven't seen you since you were this small. Oh, you've grown so big. Give me a kiss, you know, that type of fucking person instead of your mom being like, oh, yeah, you should watch out for the psychopath. Yeah, he killed me. He's might, he might try to kill you because you look kind of like me because you know you're my child. But um, no, she doesn't do anything helpful. She's just like, oh, look how big you've grown. Like, shut the fuck up. Do something helpful. Help her. But no, she doesn't. She's like the biggest bitch ghost until the end of the movie where she just fucking like decides to show what happened. <laughs> There's a lot of them um, VHS cuts. They get really annoying because it's the same shit. Uh, the runtime could have been cut down a bit if they got rid of those because she keeps having VHS dreams about memories about with her mom. But yeah, whatever. She just notices little things in the distortion. She listens to the static quite a bit. Some of those scenes could have been cut because they're not very helpful. They're very boring. They don't move the story forward. And they aren't scary. They're not scary. Like, oh, mom says, Chloe, Chloe. Scary. Very scary. But uh, we do get a moment in the movie where we see the psycho kill a woman in her car. Uh, with a box cutter. <laughs> I know um, people like to try and have their killers have their signature weapons. But a box cutter? Are they trying to go for some really morbid sexist joke? <laughs> box cutter and only kills women? I don't know. But anyway, he kills her. Uh, she hears a new voice every now and again. Uh, the voices are distorted because there's a lot of voices. But her mom's voice cuts through them all quite a lot of the time. It's not very scary. I'm, I'm just going to say these ghosts are like the least scary ghosts. Because all they do is go way, 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 way through the fucking static. Oh, I've been killed. Oh, help me. You know, it's not really scary. Unless you're the person hearing it and thinking you're going mad. Anyway, she thinks she's going mad. She calls a doctor. A doctor comes through. A doctor's like, oh, what's wrong? She's like, I'm starting to have a total I'm, I'm thinking I'm going mad. I'm going crazy. And she's like, let me take you to dinner. <laughs> so the doctor, they got dinner. Talk about her past. That's when she brings up the whole meningitis thing. She just, it, it, it's kind of a weird date type thing, which I'm pretty sure is illegal between a doctor and a patient. But anyway, uh, they come back to the house. Uh, Chloe offers to let the doctor stay the night. The doctor, I'm pretty sure, does stay the night. Because when Chloe gets up the next day, she notices the doctor is gone. She's like, where'd you go, doc? Calls her up. You know, hey, doc, I know I fucked up. Um, but I need you. And uh, anyway, later on, she's doing more investigating about the ghost stuff. And she falls asleep. And all of a sudden she wakes up and she's in Hank's cabin. Yeah. Hank says that her dad sent her, sent him to, you know, check up on her. See if she's okay. Because she wasn't responding to calls or texts. And that is when um, she sees a message from her dad saying, where are you? And all sorts of stuff. And she gets the feeling that she isn't safe because Hank is starting to act very strange and psychotic. And then um, she pretends to vomit, like she's going to vomit. She did vomit earlier in the movie, 
but she pretends that she's going to vomit. She goes into the bathroom, she, you know, she's like, uh, 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 really loud. And then um, she runs the water. Uh, she run, She escapes out the window. She leaves her phone in the house, though. She left it out the bathroom. So Hank is giving this monologue about how she hears what he hears. And he's he's going to, you know, do whatever he's going to do. And he's, like, getting his murder kit out. He's getting his kit on. <laughs> Get, he's getting gloves on. <laughs> he's got the box cutter. <laughs> and he fucking does this really serious like but it's so fucking funny because <laughs> it's a fucking box cutter it's not like a really big knife or a fucking like actually terrifying bladed weapon it's a fucking box cutter i mean yeah you can still kill someone with a box cutter but it's not as scary as like a buck knife like what ghostface has or a kit knife like what michael myers has or an x or something bigger or the bigger blade, bigger surface. You know that you see an axe, you think someone's gonna, if someone swings it at you, you know you're gonna die. You see someone with a box cutter, you kind of think, yeah, it can hurt, but I can still get him because it's a tiny blade. But anyway, <laughs> she's already escaped out the window. She tries to get in his car, but it, go, it goes beep, 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 you know, the car alarm goes off and he's like, she's like, oh fuck, runs away. And that's when he, catches on that she is in fact not in the house after he busts the bathroom door down and then he hears her fuck around with the car and he's like fuck you oh, get back here get back here Chloe I'm gonna fucking kill you and uh, <laughs> it doesn't sound like that but it's really funny to me to make him sound like that he's like, I'm gonna fucking kill you you look like your mother oh. and your mother wouldn't have sex with me oh, blah, blah, blah. you know being a big bitch but um she runs home or at least she tries to run home. And she ends up at this place where he stores the bodies and he hangs them up. And that's where she finds her doctor's body. This is why I'm saying I'm not sure if <laughs> Jamie's uh, mom is there or not. But anyway, she managed to make it home after having to escape there. And then um, she rushes to the... She rushes home, she tries to get a blade, doesn't work. He knocks her out, ties her to his bed, and he's like, oh, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. And he's just, you know, psycho babble. And then that's when Jamie comes over and he's like, I came to check up on you because I haven't seen you in a while. Are you okay? And then he's like, oh, fuck, I need to... Uh, Hank's like, oh, fuck, I need to get rid of this guy. I need to get rid of him. So <laughs> he goes down... And the guy, Jamie's like, what the fuck, why are you here, Hank? Hank just fucking shivs him a few times with the box cutter. And then, um, which gives, um, gives her time to, uh, undo her plastic ties. And she goes out the window. Uh, and then she goes into the, into the house again. She grabs a knife. We don't see it. We don't see this happen. It's implied because he comes back up to the room and he's like, where the fuck are you? And then she comes in, she fucking stabs him in the back of the, 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 just here, just near the shoulder blade. But it doesn't do much to stop him. <laughs> she doesn't try to stab him again. She doesn't go like, fuck you, stab, 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 stab. No, she just like leaves it in and then runs away. And it's like, you, you, you had the upper hand. Keep going. <laughs> fucking kill him. He's trying to kill you. You just tried to kill Jamie. Jamie's bleeding out on the floor. Like fucking, doesn't matter, doesn't matter, just fucking stab him, like, 50 times if it takes, but no, she stabs him once, leaves it in, runs away, now he has a box cutter and an actual knife, oh, fuck's sake, I mean, yeah, he'll bleed for quite a bit, but, like, he'll still has a, still has a chance of fucking stabbing her a few times, but, um, anyway, she runs away, she goes to see about Jamie, and then he comes downstairs, and he's like, I'm gonna fucking kill you, and then uh, on the TV, it plays what happened between them and his, like, Hank and her mom. He's all like, you can hear what I hear. And then it, that starts playing where he attacked her mom like 12 years ago. And then uh, 
there's this really high pitched sound that makes them go like that, like, oh fuck, oh uh, shit, oh uh, fuck, ah, my ears is so loud, oh god, and it, like, it attacks Hank a lot more than it attacks her, which obviously that's the mom, the mom actually doing something useful, despite the fact that I was bitching about it, I don't remember what happened next, to be honest, because it's kind of, it's kind of, um, it's kind of lame. He tries to um, reason, and uh, anyway, Chloe, hold on, yeah, Chloe then slits Hank's throat, tells him, shh, sorry, I, I had it in mind, I forgot, that's why I have notes, <laughs> so she tries to keep Joshua alive, she hears ringing, and the mom says, say happy 4th of July, because it's one of the lines in the in the, the in one of the tapes that she keeps watching over and over again because she keeps watching these family tapes uh, that that they're pointless until this moment where she says say happy fourth of july and then chloe turns around towards the tv and says happy fourth of july and then the movie ends that that's literally the ending happy fourth of july black screen uh, we don't know if Joshua's alive, we don't know if he died, uh, we don't know, we know that obviously Hank is dead, we know the doctor's dead, we know that woman in the car is dead, don't know about Joshua's mum, but I'm pretty sure she is dead because Joshua hasn't said anything about her, maybe she's not dead, maybe she survived, who knows, maybe Hank t decided not to kill her, I mean he was there, he could have done it. But, um, he knows where she is. But anyway, yeah, that was The Unheard. Um, I managed to condense a two hour and five minute movie into about 23 minutes. But yeah, um, <laughs> hopefully you enjoyed. Hopefully see you all next time. Um, I will try to get more out since, you know, I missed two weeks. Hopefully... I do, because, you know, it would be really shit if I missed two weeks and then suddenly missed another week after doing one. I'll try and get it out earlier than uh, I did this week. But yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed. Hopefully see you all next time. Sorry, I'm fidgeting with a thing. Anyway, see you all next time. Hopefully you enjoyed, as I said, like three times now. If you want to help me out, if you enjoyed again, hit subscribe. If you want notifications, you got the bell. I'm doing this because YouTube wants you to do that. But anyway, like, comment, subscribe, you know all that stuff that every YouTuber says. You know, oh, like, 80% of you aren't subscribed. You know, that, that stupid shit. But anyway, hopefully you enjoyed. Hopefully see you all next time. Smiler.